Mother Nature has presented us with more marvels than we can begin to comprehend. More often than not, these have become famous tourist attractions attracting millions across the globe who just wish to get a glimpse of something that cannot be explained. Call it a limitation of technology or whatever you want to, countless things are beyond our reach. Nature works in mysterious ways and there are countless occasions that this has been proved to be true. What people understand and can give logic to is termed science. But what about the things that are beyond science? There is nothing quite like nature. Out of all the things it is best at, one of them is hiding the most jaw-dropping mysteries in plain sight. Places that cannot be accessed, where video cameras won't work for some anonymous reason, and dangers that people are not alive to share with the rest of the world. It is safe to say that nature is not the one to be tempered with and it knows how to disguise itself and protect what's important. One such wonder is the Grand Canyon National Park. Right now, as we speak, it is one of the most distinguished landscapes in America where tourists gather to experience the sheer vastness and geological construction of the place. But why did such a hotspot shut down when a drone captured what no one was supposed to see? It sparked various controversies among people from all over the world, including experts in the field of history and geology who gave their verdict on the apparent reasons for the park to shut down. Buckle up as we begin to understand why the U.S. just shut down the Grand Canyon after a drone spotted what no one was supposed to see. 1. Powell's Expeditions A scientific expedition at the Grand Canyon is any geologist's or expeditor's dream. The fact that nature has blessed us with breathtaking scenery, sculptures, monuments and places of great importance is undeniable. As humans we have had the chance to tap into nature's tapestry and uncover the wonders it hides to this day. Grand Canyon is that place. Unlike many other places open to tourists for exploration, this only opened up 10% of the total area the canyon covers. It was until a drone spotted what no one was supposed to see that the U.S. had no option but to shut it down for good until further notice. But what was it that the drone spotted? Was it something new or something that has not been talked about or researched? Or is it something that has ignited the flames of old research yet again? Honestly, both these options sound scary, but what if we are on the verge of discovering something so fascinating that it changes the way we have looked at history until now? Giant unexplored caves, mysterious phenomena so intriguing that the explanation is beyond current scientific knowledge, these are no new subjects of discussion for science. But now and then there have been so many mysterious discoveries around the globe which always makes us think that we might be on the verge of a breakthrough. But is it because of a lack of technology that such strange occurrences have been given the title of mystery and the acts of extraterrestrial beings? Let us take a crack at it and attempt to uncover the phenomena that have intrigued the scientific community for so long now. John Wesley Powell is rather an interesting and extremely important figure in discovering the secrets that lie in the vast stretch of the Grand Canyon. He embarked on two expeditions in an attempt to solve mysteries that had been bugging the scientific community for a long time. The first expedition commenced on May 24, 1869 in Green River City, Wyoming. The crew had assembled four boats with the necessary supplies including survival kits, food, adequate ammunition and weapons in case of an emergency, and the scientific equipment which was of supreme importance to collect data samples of any mysterious object found and analyze it. The three-month trip was intended to explore the Colorado River housed within the great depths of the canyon. The boats were crafted out of oak material and divided into three compartments which were made with water-tight properties so that no water might penetrate and damage the supplies they were carrying. It was the fourth boat that was commanded by Powell and his boat had most of the scientific gear stashed in its compartments. They began their journey navigating the way through the rapid currents of Flaming George which was notorious for its nature as a water body and not without context. In the initial stages of the expedition itself, they faced many troublesome situations. On today's date, the gates of the Lodore mark the northern boundary of Dinosaur National Monument. Powell wrote in one of his journals that the place be called the Canyon of Lodore. His text in the journal did not suggest whose idea it was, but they just went ahead and adopted the name. It was on June 9th that the crew encountered their first disaster as termed by Powell. One of the boats no name was caught in a rapid current of the river that swept it and obliterated the boat, while the crew barely made it out alive crashing on a nearby island. It was Powell at the other end who scouted the crew and the boat as they went down. Most of the components that were to be used in the expedition went down mainstream at a part of the river which according to Powell were too difficult to be recovered again. One of the three boats that made it to the shore had to go back to the island where the crew was waiting for its rescue. 
While one of the boats was dispatched the intention was to check the hull as well as the destroyed vessel, in case they found any scientific equipment left behind. To their surprise, a bag full of barometers was discovered, and it seemed like not all was lost. The barometers are required in order to determine the altitude of the river at given points along its course which was one of the major objectives of the expedition. To Powell's surprise, a gallon of whiskey was also recovered which Powell would terms as medicinal whiskey. While that was alright, the crew have seemed to lost their essential food and water supplies which were recovered from the crash site, but the other three boats were already loaded with enough stuff so they had to be left behind. On June 15th and 16th, the crew came across Hell's Half Mile. That area has earned its reputation because of a 100-foot drop in a distance of half a mile. Despite these treacherous encounters, this is what Powell said this has been a chapter of disasters and toils, notwithstanding which the canyon of the Lodor was not devoid of scenic interest. Even beyond the power of pen to tell, the roar of its waters was heard unceasingly from the hour we entered it until we landed here, no quiet in all that time. But its walls and cliffs, its peaks and crags, its amphitheaters and alcoves tell a story of beauty and grandeur that I hear yet, and shall hear. What was planned as the perfect expedition to the Grand Canyon was now turning out to be a prison, of which the crew was not sure that it would make it out alive, with most of their supplies including food and ration gone. It was now a matter of survival. Almost every day they witnessed currents that were beyond anyone's comprehension and nothing they had ever seen before. On June 24, the party came across a stretch that was of the Unita Mountains for about six miles. They named it the Spilt Mountain Canyon. Powell along with his crew spent a good amount of time there discovering about Unita's language and any other articles that they could find. Traces of an ancient civilization might have been discovered there that date back to several centuries ago. After spending almost two months in discovering ancient ruins and unexplored caves, the crew finally made it out alive. However, there were certain challenges that the crew encountered in their first expedition. First, they were not aware of the rapids that they would encounter in the depths of the canyon. Additionally, the gear and rations had to be prepped and taken care of accordingly. Also, they discovered many more secrets within the Grand Canyon such as traces of gold and other minerals, unexplored caves and vast underground networks, there was no way to track or keep a record of it in order to show it to others when they were back. There are also rumors that while exploring one of the caves they encountered tribal communities that were native to the place, and three of the crew members were slaughtered by the tribe. So the next expedition was planned keeping all these factors in mind. The second expedition commenced from 1872 to 1873 and its focus and planning were created to achieve different motives as compared to the first one, where the main goal was to navigate the rivers within the canyon and collect as much data as possible. The second trip included more geological and scientific devices that aimed to expand on the knowledge gathered in the first one. Powell and his team meticulously mapped not only the Colorado River but also its major tributaries including the Green and San Juan Rivers. This expanded mapping gave a great deal of insight into a much more comprehensive understanding of the river's entire system, which was crucial for future navigational and geological studies. The team composition for the second expedition was notably more diverse and specialized compared to the first. Powell onboarded a team of experts such as geologists, botanists, and ethnologists. This multidisciplinary approach allowed for a more focused exploration of the region. Geologists on the team, like Clarence Dutton, provided detailed analyses of the area's complex rock formations and contributed to the understanding of the geological history of the Colorado Plateau. Botanists collected and documented a wide array of plant species which added significant valuable information about the region's flora. Additionally, the ethnologists studied the cultures and practices of the indigenous tribes, including the Hopi and Navajo, which offered insights into their interaction with the environment. Additionally, the expedition was equipped with improved technology and resources. The expert team was accompanied by much better boats and equipment so that the navigation was smooth and it facilitated in mapping the explored areas better. The experience gained from the first expedition enabled Powell to address the logistical challenges more effectively, which led to more reliable data collection and documentation. The second expedition also placed a stronger emphasis on scientific documentation and preservation. Detailed records were kept, and numerous sketches and photographs were made, which captured the geological features, flora, fauna, and cultural artifacts encountered along the journey. These records played a crucial role in advancing the scientific understanding of the region, and contributed to the establishment of the United States Geological Survey USGS. Overall, the second expedition was a landmark in the scientific exploration of the American West. 2. Traces of Ancient Civilizations 
It is no doubt that the Grand Canyon presents some of the most jaw-dropping views of nature. It is that aspect of nature which humbles you, making you realize that you are just a part of this cosmos which stretches infinitely. Embarking on journeys to uncover what hides in the Grand Canyon revealed ancient tribe populations as well which was not discovered earlier. The Native American tribes have a different relationship altogether with the Grand Canyon and this has been made pretty evident through their cultural and traditional practices that date back to the centuries from which they have been living there. One of the most significant tribes found in the region is the Hopi tribe. The tribe seems to be located on the eastern side of the Grand Canyon. For this tribe the canyon is no less than a sacred site as it might be connected to the tribe's creation. Additionally, the tribe also believes it to be one of the places that the world originated from with the respect they have for the canyon in their hearts and amongst their local population, they often worship the canyon and the deities associated with it. The tribe is most often recognized for their intricate basket weaving work, pottery making and kachina dolls. Havasu Canyon on the other hand is home to the Havasupai tribe which is often known as the people of the blue-green water. The area is renowned for its waterfalls which are deeply connected to nature and also known to be connected to the tribe's spiritual life. There are waterfalls such as the Havasu Falls and the Muni Falls. Spending a long time within the canyon has taught the tribe to adapt to their surroundings. One of the most prominent examples of this is the form of agriculture that is practiced within that vicinity as the tribe relies on the water sources available there. On recent occasions, the tribe has encountered numerous challenges which even reflect on their cultural values and traditions but still stand strong today. The Huallapai tribe, whose name means people of the tall pines, call the northern part of the Grand Canyon their home, which includes the areas around the scenic Grand Canyon West. They, unlike other tribes, have a deep cultural connection to the canyon, with their traditions and ceremonies highlighting their relationship with the land. They are known for their storytelling traditions, which often include references to the canyon and its features. The Huallapai have developed the Grand Canyon Skywalk, a glass bridge that extends over the canyon which serves both as a tourist attraction and a symbol of their economic development and cultural pride. The Skywalk has also been a means for the Huallapai to share their heritage and contribute to their community's well-being. This next one takes the credit for being the largest federally recognized tribe by the United States government. The Navajo Nation has territories that extend into the northeastern part of the Grand Canyon. While their traditional lands are not within the canyon itself, the Grand Canyon holds significant spiritual meaning for the Navajo. Navajo creation stories and ceremonial practices often reference the Grand Canyon, and the tribe has historically used the region's resources. The Navajo are known for their weaving, particularly recognized for their intricate Navajo rugs and blankets, which are highly prized. They also produce unique silver jewelry that often encompasses intricate designs reflecting their cultural heritage. Other tribes found in and around the canyon are Paiute and Yavapai, while the location of all these tribes might be different from one another, they have a few things in common. For them, there is nothing beyond the canyon and its surrounding ground that can be considered as home. Additionally, over time they have been taught to adapt, according to the situations, whether it's utilizing the resources present to maintain their sustenance or interacting with humans like us, even if they don't want to. 3. Massive Cave Networks While on expedition there was a massive cave network discovered, and it struck the scientific community with fascination. Questions started pouring in as to what these caves consisted of and how long have they been there. The remote location of these underground labyrinths made it all the more mysterious. One of the mysteries it is surrounded by is the inaccessibility of the caves and the trouble one might have to go through to explore them. Many of these caves are located at cliffs which are backed up by complex rock formations making it challenging to navigate. In one of the instances during Powell's exploration he got stuck in his harness hanging from a cliff where he could not climb up or down, it's that dangerous. Another task is to carry proper equipment and people with the desired expertise to navigate the treacherous landscape. Finding the entrance to the caves is a challenge in itself. Some of the earliest documented cases of the cave originated in the late 19th and early 20th century primarily by explorers, miners, and prospectors. The most famous or rather the most controversial report came in 1909 from G.E. Kincaid, Kincaid was working at the Smithsonian Institution at the time and claimed to have come across a massive cave network, which supposedly contained objects and artifacts belonging to ancient civilizations. 
According to an article published in the Arizona Gazette on April 5, 1909, Kincaid described a vast underground city with chambers containing statues, tools, weapons, and mummies, all of which suggested an origin far removed from the Native American cultures typically associated with the region. This report, while sensational, has never been substantiated, and the Smithsonian has denied any involvement. This has led to widespread skepticism among historians and archaeologists. Despite the nature of Kincaid's claims, the story has now been looked at as a popular legend, adding to the mystery of the Grand Canyon's caves. Later on, the cave was studied and researched extensively by geologists who made some incredible discoveries. Geologists took a crack at understanding the cave formations in a better manner. They studied stalactites, stalagmites, and flowstones, which are a creation of minerals from dripping water and take an extremely long time to form. While these formations explain in great detail the geological clock of the canyon, including the amount of time it took to be the way it is, but additionally provide comprehensive details on the climate that existed centuries ago. Moreover, archaeologists have come across evidence that suggests ancient people and tribes might have inhabited the caves a long time ago. They found pottery, shards, and other materials that make the possibility of an indigenous tribe very real. Speculations suggest that the people might have called it their home, or must have used the caves as temporary shelters, to protect themselves from wild animals or harsh weather conditions at the time. Researchers also came across bones and other animal deposits which suggests a diverse wildlife existence, which is now alleged to be extinct. Talking about the origins of the cave, experts believe that it is most likely a geological formation. The caves must have been formed through a process known as karstification, where slightly acidic water dissolves the limestone and sandstones at a steady pace, creating voids and tunnels for over a million years. Some of these caves might have started as underground rivers or could have been created by seepage of water through cracks in the rocks. However, the discovery of human artifacts within the cave has raised significant questions about their use and the nature of humans who inhabited the place before disowning it. The presence of pictographs inclines toward the cultural significance of the caves for humans who existed at that time. Saying all that, the origins of the cave and artifacts found there continue to remain a mystery and for various reasons. Many believe it to be the remnants of an ancient civilization that no longer exists in the world. While mainstream scholars dismiss this idea due to lack of evidence, many consider it to be true. To put it simply, the Grand Canyon and its caves have been mapped extensively since the expeditions of people like Powell and other scientific communities who have showcased interest in unraveling the cave's mysteries. However, it still contains a huge portion of uncharted territory that has still not been mapped yet. What it holds secret and what will the world be exposed to continues to remain a mystery. 4. The Great Unconformity One of the most interesting features found in the canyon has something to do with the whole world. It's that formations like these have been discovered in other parts of the world as well. The Great Unconformity in the Grand Canyon is one such area where ancient Precambrian rocks, which are over 1.2 billion years old, are directly overlain by much younger Cambrian sedimentary rocks which are a mere 540 million years old. It's a no-brainer that none of these timelines are recent, but to exist in such proximity begs so many unanswered questions about the complexities of time and geological phenomena that the human mind cannot even begin to comprehend. The gap represents a missing timeline of a whopping 700 million years, which is almost like a missing chapter of Earth. The presence of the great unconformity within the Grand Canyon gives us a vivid picture of the formation of Earth's crust, the older Precambrian rocks are typically hard igneous and metamorphic that formed deep within the Earth's crust. These rocks are a staggering representation of an ancient time when Earth was still in its formation stage and everything was just beginning to stabilize. Over time these rocks must have been exposed to a significant amount of erosion which likely removed several layers of overlying material. The erosion, weathering and harsh tectonic activity must have stripped multiple rock layers, leaving an uneven surface behind. The younger Paleozoic rocks above the Great Unconformity are sedimentary in nature, consisting of sandstone, shale, and limestone layers. These rocks were deposited in a shallow sea that once covered the region during the Cambrian period. The sharp contrast between the two sets of rock layers, a flat, horizontal layer of sedimentary rocks resting atop much older, tilted, and eroded Precambrian rocks, is as fascinating as it can be. It visibly marks the Great Unconformity. This boundary signifies a long period of erosion and non-deposition before new sediment begins to accumulate, thus creating a missing record of geological events in the intervening time. Geologists have spent hours on studying the complex processes that would have led to such formation of rocks. 
One of the most promising theories suggested is that the rocks must have formed as a result of a supercontinent breakup Rodinia which was around 750 million years ago. The drifting and eventual breakup of this content could have caused massive erosions that led to the formation of the Great Unconformity. The Great Unconformity is of great relevance to scientists and visitors alike. Get the world play we did there? For scientists it is to rattle their brains in figuring out what went behind the complex creation of this structure. For visitors it strikes them as a nature marvel that is beyond their understanding. The missing time represented by the conformity is called a hiatus in geological terms and is known to be one of the most profound examples of a time gap like this. The sharp boundary between the ancient weathered Precambrian rocks and the overlying Cambrian sediments serves as a geological time capsule capturing the story of Earth's transformation over eons, even as it leaves many questions unanswered about what happened during the missing intervals. 5. The Town Within the Grand Canyon Hold on, the Great Unconformity is not the only time capsule present in the Grand Canyon. Nestled deep within the depths of the Great Grand Canyon lies yet another peaceful town, where people have stuck to the old ways and nature has been kind to them. If you wish to be a part of this fascinating journey you might want to commence a trek on foot or take a helicopter. While taking the helicopter is the easier way and you will get to see some stunning views of the canyon from a great height, walking has its benefits. We prefer walking but anyway when you have crossed 8 miles from the nearest road to the canyon and ventured deep within the valley at the bottom of Havasu Canyon you will come across the Supai village. This is the only place in the United States where the mail is delivered by a mule to this day. The town's economy is primarily based on tourism which peaks during the warmer months when hikers gather in the area to experience the famous Havasu Falls. These waterfalls with their striking turquoise blue waters are among the most photographed natural landmarks in the world. The water's distinct color is the result of high levels of calcium carbonate which is deposited as a white mineral called travertine. This mineral coats the rocks and creates the vibrant blue-green hue that has become a trademark of Havasu Falls. The Havasupai people have lived alongside these falls for centuries, considering them sacred and integral to their cultural identity. In addition to Havasu Falls, the area is home to other spectacular waterfalls such as Mooney Falls and Beaver Falls, each offering a relatively new experience for visitors. Mooney Falls, the tallest of the three, plunges nearly 200 feet into a pool below, which creates a dramatic and powerful spectacle. Beaver Falls, on the other hand, is more secluded. The journey to these falls often involves navigating steep and rocky terrain, ladders and tunnels adding to the sense of adventure and remoteness. Perfect for an adrenaline junkie or an adventure seeker. Despite its reliance on tourism, Supai remains deeply connected to its agricultural roots. The Havasupai people traditionally practiced farming, growing crops such as corn, beans, squash, and melons in the fertile soils of Havasu Canyon. The river and natural springs provide a reliable source of water which has enabled the community to sustain itself in an otherwise tough environment. Today some families in Supai continue to farm in an attempt to maintain their traditional agricultural practices passed down through generations. The town itself contains a small number of buildings that include homes, a general store, a post office, a lodge for visitors, and a school that serves the local children from kindergarten through eighth grade. There is also a small medical clinic that provides basic healthcare services, although more serious medical issues often require transportation by helicopter to larger towns or cities. While electricity and running water are available, internet access and other modern amenities are limited, which sort of allows the people to have a sense of living in a place that is largely untouched by the outside world. The Havasupai language, which belongs to the Yuto Aztecan language family, is still spoken by the majority of residents and efforts are made to teach the language to younger generations. Traditional ceremonies, such as the Peach Festival, are important events that celebrate the community's agricultural heritage and spiritual connection to the land. The tribe also continues to produce traditional crafts such as basket weaving and beadwork which are sold to visitors and help support the local economy. The Havasupai have a complex and storied history with the Grand Canyon and the federal government. In the late 19th century, the Havasupai were forcibly removed from much of their traditional homeland when the Grand Canyon became a national park. Confined to a small reservation in Havasu Canyon, the tribe struggled to maintain their way of life. Thanks to consistent and much-needed legal efforts, the Havasupai were able to regain control of some of their ancestral lands in 1975, which expanded the reservation and allowed them to continue their traditional practices and protect their sacred sites. Living in Supai comes with many challenges, including the constant threat of flash floods, which can occur suddenly due to heavy rains upstream. These floods have, 
at times caused significant damage to the town and its infrastructure. In 2008, a major flood forced the evacuation of residents and tourists and caused considerable destruction to the trail system and campgrounds. The Havasupai have since rebuilt and continue to adapt to the ever-changing conditions of their environment. Supai's unique combination of isolation, natural beauty, and cultural heritage makes it a remarkable place. The town's preservation of traditional Havasupai life, coupled with its role as a gateway to some of the most beautiful landscapes in the Grand Canyon, offers visitors a rare opportunity to experience a way of life that has endured for centuries. For the Havasupai people, Supai is not just a place to live, it is the heart of their identity and their enduring connection to the land that has sustained them for generations. As of now, the Grand Canyon is open for tourists to visit. Now this video can act as a bonus for both. For those who have been to the Grand Canyon before and are planning another trip, and for those who are yet to go for the first time, going there with an open mind and much more knowledge always comes in handy. You might be able to relate to a whole lot of stuff you heard about in this video. Filled with trails, wonders and geographical wonders, the place is a must visit. Although what do you think about the mysteries of the Grand Canyon we discussed in this video? Which one was the most fascinating for you? Are there any other interesting facts or conspiracy theories that you have heard of the Grand Canyon before? Let us know in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for much more informational content. If you like this video, do drop a like and share it with everyone you know.